Okay, so we are back with yet another Artists in Residence Live. This time I have two artist friends with me, Sherry Jones and Marnie Rose Edge. And I think we should start with a little happy birthday to you both. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Yay, you guys both share a birthday with another friend of ours, another 13 feet off the ground artist, Jen Brisson. And uh, happy birthday and thanks for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. I know I'm two days late, but we're close. <laughs> <laughs> it's a birthday week. First, first week, yeah. So you two are uh, close friends outside of the art world. And, uh, and so I think it's gonna be really fun for us all to be able to, uh, to share this experience today. What we're gonna do is take a walk through first of Marnie Rose's studio in, Marnie Rose, are you in Vancouver or North? Then. Um, my studio is in Vancouver. My home is in New Westminster. Right, right. And your studio is in Parker Street, which I'm super excited yeah. to get a peek into. And Sherry, you're on the North Shore. Oh, and yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm up here in my mountain loft. And this is the first time we've done a recording when it hasn't been snowing. So it's actually sunny out. I'm thinking wow. that uh, might, be, nice. might be time. So uh, I'm going to start up a screen share and we will start with Marnie Rose's, here we go. And I just need to oh, awesome. click a couple of buttons and make sure our volume's off. And here we go, you're all ready? Yep. <laughs> and rolling. Welcome to my studio. I share it with uh, another artist. So we'll go inside. As you can see, it's quite a large space. Uh, and then, and there's a lot of work going on and have been going on since COVID started. Gorgeous Jeff work. It's behind the curtain, so she has another big space in there. So, due to, I paint in oils and watercolor. So you can see the lilies are watercolor and all the roses are oils. Gorgeous. Behind there is storage. <laughs> Behind the, the paintings on the left is storage. I'm taking a online workshop at the moment, painting clouds and oils with uh, Adriano Farinella. Wow. And then this is my private uh, painting area. So I have a the workspace is for painting and then I paint more or less in here just in oils so i've got works in progress and small paintings and my contemplation chair which i absolutely love mm. so these are small paintings that have been created during this period i'll spin around there's a commission on the easel it's a work in progress and i back on to train tracks that are very, very noisy most of the time. <laughs> I have a collection of a lot of stuff, including my pigs, which I love my pigs. <laughs> <laughs> and more clouds in progress on the easel. I paint nests as well as uh, roses. A couple of more uh, in progress ones. And then you'll kind of see my self-portrait that is, if I can back up far enough. <laughs> there it is, my one and only self-portrait. <laughs> yeah, so this area that has the storage in it and the, um, the main area is where I teach. And that's a six foot painting across the back wall. Six yeah. feet by three feet. So I have a lovely space. I absolutely love it. Um, the roses, the yellow roses are a commission and this is a close up of the watercolor. Beautiful. And now this is my home studio, which is a very small space. <laughs> I go from one stream to the other. So pause because you'll be able to see it all in one shot basically. So this is where 
<clears throat> so I packed up my car full of all my supplies during thinking there was going to be a major lockdown at the studio and there wasn't. So um, I ended up doing instructional videos here instead. So I just posted four on YouTube yesterday. And the guitars are my husband's. And the dolls are what I did before I started painting and everything from the porcelain to the costuming to hat making to shoe making and everything. Wow. And wigs as well. So it was a passion for quite a long time. And this is where I am sitting for <laughs> my desk. So it's in front of a, my front yard. And this is my backyard, which is my inspiration for a lot of what I paint. I grow roses and peonies and all sorts of good stuff and the occasional tomato plant. <laughs> Most of it is uh, florals that I grow in the garden. And it's extremely lush this year with the amount of warmth and rain that we've had. We've had a very dry season since all this started. So it's been awesome. So you get a sneak peek into my world. Gorgeous. Oh, wow. That is, uh, yeah, beautiful, all of it. Uh, we will just advance here. And uh, Sherry, do you want to take us for a walk through your world? You're all set. Sure, as long as you don't get car seat. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to go slow. <laughs> right on the horizon. No. <laughs> and this is my uh, teaching, working, personal studio in uh, North Vancouver on Pemberton Avenue. I've been here seven and a half years, and it is my heaven, my haven, my everything, um, just where I can go and get away from it all. Um, there are no windows in this studio. It's 200 square feet, but I have two awesome skylights. And so my permanent easel sits right under the skylight. Um, on the easel right now, I'm working on a self-portrait. Um, I work in oils and uh, I've done a black and white study, as you can see. Um, and then there's my corner where I have all my stuff and my palette, which is a 1920s Canadian made mahogany tea trolley, which is a, a kind of a precious thing. And because this is my teaching studio, I have color charts and then uh, really just a lot of uh, my, own, my own work. Um, I've been painting flowers lately because it's spring and that's helping to keep me happy and somewhat sane. Um, but the self-portrait too is uh, indicative of the times and how I'm feeling and it's been a bit of a roller coaster actually. This wall is my portrait series. I recognize all of those faces. <laughs> yes. Nice. You're in there too, Carol. <laughs> this is my home studio, my humble little basement suite where I live. Um, and half of it has taken up uh, by my little um, demo online painting studio, which used to be my dining room. So that's my command center there. And um, I teach classes two days a week online on Zoom. Um, and so I've, you know, jury rigged tripods and iPhone holders and stuff like that. Um, that's my plein air easel. So when I uh, thought we'd be locked down, I brought all my plein air stuff and made sure I had all my supplies that I needed in case we got shut right down. Of course, because you're not going to go not paint for any great length of time as an artist. Right. And then, um, the other side of my living room is where my couch is and my fireplace and my television. And that's my, some of my evening entertainment, a uh, piece of my art um, and my wall of shame or fame, depending on how you look at it, but uh, lots of really uh, fond memories and uh, beautiful things. I've led a fortunate life to date, I'll tell you that much. Right on, beautiful. So for people who are watching, uh, if you are enjoying these glimpses into artist studios, uh, please remember to subscribe and uh, set a reminder for when we do our next studio tours and uh, share it with all your arty friends. 
I'm just gonna shut that off. And you know what I found super interesting watching that with both of you? It's fun that we're on together. Uh, you're kind of in a similar situation where you both have external studios, both prepped for the big lockdown, thinking, you know, am I even gonna be able to access my studio? But you were both able to access it, or you have been up until this point, is that right? Yes. <clears throat> yeah. And, 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 so, almost seven days a week. Oh, wow. Wow. And how's that been? It was so, <laughs> it was eerie to start with because there was very few people around. Traffic was a dream um, and parking was blue. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Especially at a place like Parker where there's, how many artists are in there? Uh, there's about 140. Yeah. Um, or probably more with the woodworkers and we are part of a woodworking space and they did not shut down at all. Yeah. They got busy. Yeah. They got busier. So it was really nice that there was very few people around. So I didn't have to worry. I was in isolation. Even Jennifer didn't come in for two or three weeks. Yeah. First month. Right. So was so, it sort of an eerie silence? It was. Even the trains slowed down because, you know, during their meal breaks, they idle outside our window for up to an, an hour or two hours. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, but even they slowed down because things were slower at the port. Yeah. Right. We're on the, the main rail line to the port. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, it was very strange in a way that it was so quiet. Yeah. And Sherry, were you mostly working at home or working at the studio? What was your experience? Well, um, I just the weekend before the it hit the fan, which was um, Friday the thirteenth, March. Yeah. Uh, the weekend before um, was the North Shore Art Crawl, and my studio and two other artists in the building. We opened our studios for that, and. Um, we don't get the traffic like Parker Street does because there's three of us in the building, not 140, but we saw 600 um, people through in two days. And so once I realized that w this um, COVID was happening, I thought I'm going to self-isolate like, like as soon as possible. Um, so I just um, scurried home with my, like I say, my plein air gear and, and that kind of thing. And then I thought, now what am I going to do? So I um, I spent the I spent pretty much two three weeks teaching myself how to use Zoom, and then rallying my all my students and you know um, trying to to actually continue to make an to make an income because um, I my um, my sold out Mexico workshop that was to uh, start on March 18th was cancelled on the 13th. Um, so, and then uh, of course, all the classes that I teach, the, all the spring classes. Um, and I've just cancelled my annual Bowen Island uh, plein air workshop for July too, just to be, to just to play it safe. Right. So I'm in no rush to, um, you know, start up. I'm not even going to make a decision about having people in my studio probably till the beginning of August. Right. At least make a decision and we're monitoring it of course we all are how what our comfort level is too right yeah so both of you a significant part of what you do is teaching right yes yeah and and how has the switchover been <laughs> uh really it, it's made me actually think about reorganizing how i schedule myself for next year mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's almost been a silver lining to, to say that normally I would teach two workshops a month for three or four months in the spring. And, uh, and then I would, <clears throat> excuse me, I'd have to shift gears from painting to teaching. So this has given me such a, a focused time to just paint. Yeah. And I've loved it. And I'm like, oh, okay. So, and actually, I am starting up a workshop next week, but I've got three people. So I've split a workshop that has seven people in it into three workshops. So it's a lot more work for me, but I'm just testing it out to see how it goes. Yeah. And 
<clears throat> go from there because I had a lot of people who had already paid for workshops during the spring and they've been really good and they're hanging in there for when we can start up again. Yeah. So well, I'll try it out and see what happens and then go from there. Mm-hmm. But it has, it's been wonderful to be able to paint continuously mm-hmm. for two months. And I, I had a solo show planned for the beginning of May and I was actually in March, I was still painting for it. So it got me finished. I got those paintings finished and, and more um, with taking the online workshop. So. Right. And, and is your show going ahead? No, no. So they phoned me the day it was supposed to be delivered. Oh, <laughs> oh my. I just figured that it wasn't going to go ahead because it's in the Plaskett gallery at the Massey Theatre, which is attached to the high school in New Westminster. Yeah. And so they don't know when they're going to open. And I talked her into letting me just do it next year. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Then I'll have more work. Yeah. So yeah, that was fun. Interesting. No. So, so many shows are cancelled, uh and things are cancelled, but the work is still happening, you know, people are still painting, yeah. producing mm-hmm. and hopefully buying and uh showing online. I've seen a lot of uh, a lot of exhibitions online lately and and you mentioned you're taking a course I know for me I signed up for Skillshare at the start of this. So the first time I had done that, I'm a addicted like (laughs) (laughs) that's been an interesting part of this hey it's uh it really has because um there's a lot of free stuff Mm -hmm. online and now um so with being able to take a workshop so adriano was actually coming out to vancouver island um in april he was supposed to teach a workshop then and then he it all fell apart so he put on a a small online workshop so i'm taking that and then two other artists who paint animals i absolutely love have decided to do online as well and i'm like well it's so much more accessible than having to travel to where they are located yeah. one's in london one's in the states so it's like i guess i'll be signing up for a few more <laughs> yeah yeah it's and sherry have you been doing some of that as well oh yeah it's it's been fascinating to feel like i've had the time to sit and watch a, a one or two hour instructional video. And I follow all these amazing plein air painters in the States and um, it's just kind of been a real, you know, and watching some of my peers that I've studied with in the States um, do interviews and stuff like that too. Yeah. <laughs> and I've also, I'm also um, taking an online uh, painting course too. And it's interesting now, and I do this and Marnie Rose and I went, <clears throat> We went to, uh, we drove down to Big Sur uh, in 2016 together to take a plein air workshop with Jennifer McChristian at Esalen. And um, that was quite interesting. But I found that since I kind of had a lot of the tools in my kit for, for plein air, Marnie Rose said, well, you know what, you should be paying very close attention to how she teaches. Right. And so now when I take workshops, I'm, I'm paying attention to as much as how they teach um, as, as what they teach, yeah. which is really fascinating. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And there's, you know, I mean, I know the three of us are all people who love the road trip and love the adventure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's part, of, part of the common bond. Uh, and while that's all on hold, it is amazing that there's this opportunity for this massive scale not not Skillshare, but an actual skill sharing across across all kinds of uh, artists groups and different you know geography like nothing matters as long as we have the internet like the day that goes down that's the day the zombie apocalypse is going to start <laughs> we'll all come blinking out of our places but uh, but uh, what a what a an unexpected opportunity a gift of time and. And oh, absolutely. Yeah. It has been amazing the difference of just being able to focus on certain things. And I know a lot of my artist friends have not been able to paint because they've lost the urge or the creativity and I'm the complete opposite. Yeah. Well, your studio is alive. Like, 
I've always <laughs> loved visiting your studio during the during the uh, um, culture crawl and uh, and Parker Street Studios. Your studio is always amazing, but the work you have going on in there right now is just you can see that you are squirreling in and doing something <laughs> really dynamic and beautiful. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, it's gorgeous. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for, for me, it's been because I'm now actually working as well as, you know, doing my art, doing this project and, uh, and, you know, theoretically have all this time, have my space set up, but all of a sudden I just want to write, like I'm spending a lot of time wow. doing creative things, but different things. And uh, it's been, it's, uh, yeah, it's just a really, it's a different time for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So... <laughs> Just the, the urge that you have, you follow, right? Because yeah. it'll produce something else. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because we've always followed our instincts, right? And we don't necessarily, I don't necessarily walk into the studio and say, uh, I'm going to do this today. Mm -hmm. Like I often do, but sometimes I just like to go in and say, okay, permission to play. Yeah. And, and, you know, like I made a PlayStation for a while that was just two tables filled with uh, collage stuff. Yeah, I just went. Oh, I'm just going to experiment with that, you know. So, yeah, yeah. different bouncing around and so, like I keep my my guitar and my ukulele close, and I'll do this. <laughs> I'll make music for a while. I'll go and you know, it's I always feel like it's a kid's adventure playground, kind of working your way around, and it keeps you fresh and it keeps you going. Yeah. And, and that keeps you yeah. going. And yeah, keep you sane. I know. I remember in your I think your first interview you said, and this is my corner where my instruments are these are my weapons of mass distraction <laughs> my instruments of mass distraction <laughs> and they totally are but it's uh i i find that it it uh, like if i was doing if i was painting or making music all day uh i wouldn't be able to keep going but you know a change is as good as a rest it is yeah it is. yeah so with all of these changes in this kind of altered um situation what would have been what's the biggest difference you notice for you in your in your world i you know that well the biggest thing i miss is the interaction with people one on one and hugging yeah <laughs> hugs yeah um there's been so many small changes like that it, it, well they, they feel like big changes and then um I've had a lot of epiphanies with why I paint during this time. And that has really been uh, probably the biggest thing that I can uh, grasp is how it will change what I'm going to do in the future. Like what? I'm curious. <laughs> <laughs> so I love roses. And I had not really focused on painting roses until the sh show came up. So why I, I found out why, what I love and why I love it. So color is one thing that I absolutely love. And for the longest time, I figured I was a tonal painter and I'm not. I'm a color painter. Right. And I really <laughs> took the time to look between my watercolors that could look like oils and my oils that um, to see how, what I loved about the watercolor and how to transition it into the oils because it was missing. And it was the absolute love of color that was missing in the oil paintings because they seemed too gray or tonal. Right. So that was one epiphany. And then the fragility of the flowers and, and the eggs that I paint and the eggshells and the nests all breaking down. It was the fragility of those things. So they had a common element in the, the subject matter right. that I was painting that I didn't recognize. I didn't have the time to do that. Right. And then I really love the falling of flowers or the cascading of, of stuff. So waterfalls do it for me, and so do you know the roses just falling out of the sky or or whatever. They're just going. I've got images in my head of of petals just or flowers just falling into water. Mm -hmm. It's another um, 
way of expressing all this. So I don't know, there's, there's definitely, it's been a great contemplation time and just full of little epiphanies of all over the place. And it's been very, quite emotional. Yeah. yeah. Which is a surprise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. And Sharon, yeah. what about you? What's been the biggest difference that you felt? Um, I didn't, I think I'm, I'm surprised at how fragile and what an emotional roller coaster it's been for me, I think. Um, and so painting wise, it's a, it's a, a bit of a roller coaster too. So, um, I've been working on a series and had stopped it and I'm hoping to get back into it of portraiture and, um, and so I'm working, I've done a value study of a self-portrait and now I'm working on a color one. And uh, it's, this has just been a really time of introspection. And I'm surprised at how, because I'm such a positive glass half full, um, you know, person in my, my own self image. Mm -hmm. And yet it's been uh, really quite rocky for me, I think. Um, and it may be too that just, you know, T still keeping on that treadmill of teaching, which it, it's a stop start f for my personal at the easel stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's hard. And I, but I noticed uh, if I go out plein air painting, I just like completely calm down and just completely take deep breaths. And um, that's really super important. And then also walking in the neighborhood and because of all the beautiful gardens up here where I live, um, that's just been mother nature's just been uh, kind of shoring me up along with um, re really dear friends like both of you, you mm -hmm. know, where I can just call you and talk and um, yeah. 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 It has, it's been, uh, it's been um, to me, I would have thought if I imagined this situation happening, it would have been more sudden in my mind. Like if I scripted it like a movie, it would have been like contagion where it's like, boom, there it is. But you know, there was no moment of like, Hey, everybody, the world's changed, you know, right. kind of slid into it. Like, here's some news. Here's a little more news. Here's a little, you know, and now here's this. And, right. uh, and so it's kind of like that boiling a frog thing over a period of about a week. Mm. You know, I think when this first started, I was on my way back from, from a trip to the island working trip and I had one night in Vancouver enough had happened that I had I had had the forethought to go to Costco and and load up on groceries ahead of the curve when everybody was kind of thinking like that's crazy um, but I got back from the trip and then things really started to happen we had one night we went to like the most crowded restaurant in Vancouver wow. this east had this big feast where we're all reaching in grabbing the you know grabbing food together and it was sort of the next morning when I had my realization like oh this this is actually happening like this is going down yeah. and and uh, you know came up here and hunkered down and uh um, but it's been, it hasn't been like a massive, you know, changes now. It's been this kind of gentle awakening and uh, realization and adjusting. And now as things are opening up in some places, it's going to be, you know, kind of the same, hopefully gradual, gentle unwinding of that knot and, you know, tentatively seeing what's happening. How are you guys feeling about sort of reintegrating and watching things open up? Are you feeling ready for it? Are you cautious? What's your thought? I'm cautious. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. There's no, uh, for me, there's no rush to get back to what was and it, and some things will never be that way. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, and it's very hard. It's very hard to respect other people's take on it if you, when you don't agree with their take on it. Yeah. It's because it's, it, you know, it's like, it's, it could potentially threaten everybody. Yeah. Right? So. Yeah. Yeah. Making room for people's opinion while, while feeling safe and making sure, yeah, it's going to be an interesting, uh, several weeks, months in front of us too. So. Yeah, I think that um, now is the scary time when it is starting to open up because <clears throat> people will get complacent. Mm -hmm. That's that's my biggest concern is that they'll just get complacent and think it's all over and done with. Yeah. 
and that's when you get the second wave. Yeah, yeah, it, it'll be it'll be interesting to watch. Well, well, we will come back uh, with other groups of artists over the next few weeks, months, w whatever direction it takes, and. Uh, and we'll keep the conversation going. Uh, for you viewers, if you're enjoying this, remember to hit subscribe and, uh, and hit your notifications and join us. Uh, we'll be back probably in a couple of weeks, but watch on Instagram, at Artists in Residence Live, and uh, on Facebook, same tag, to see when the next episode is coming up and what artists are gonna be joining us. I really thank both of you for coming and sharing your space, sharing your thoughts, and uh, sharing your beautiful work and your friendship. And I just, uh, yeah, it's been nice having this time. So big thanks to both of you. I will have your contact information in the, um, in the notes on YouTube, but do you wanna just quickly give us a where to find you online? Marnie Rose? Um, I'm at, my website is www.marneyroseedge.com, marnieroseedge.com. Uh, on Instagram at fi Edge Fine Art. Beautiful. Sherry? Um, um, I am at uh, www.sherryjones.com. <laughs> 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 That's S H E R E E J O N E S dot com. And um, Instagram is at Sherry Jones Fine Art. And Facebook is Sherry Jones Fine Art too. Beautiful. So I'm Carol McQuaid, uh, C-A-R-O-L-M-C-Q-U-A-I-D, and it's Carol McQuaid Art. The website, the Instagram, and the Facebook are all the same, Carol McQuaid Art. Um, and if you want to see what's happening with this program, it's Artists in Residence Live. So thanks for joining us, and we will see you soon with more tales for how artists are dealing with this crazy new world. Okay, thanks, ladies. Carol. Thank you. Bye.